All right, so now we've gone over a little bit about um, basic sort of elements of, of neural structure, excuse me, neuron structure, different types of support um, cells that are involved, and uh, now we're going to talk about chemistry of how a neuron communicates, what's in, what are the pieces in a neuron that really matter for neural communication. So this here is a up-close view of the cell body of a neuron. Okay, so here's the dendrites over here. Here's the axon that is myelinated. So we're now we're going to look at the cell body. Um, this will house all of the fundamental machinery that is needed for the neuron to work. So just to we're going to go through these just to review. So here you have um, again this is going to be a dendrite up here, the cell extension that collects information from other cells. This is the dendritic spine. This increases the surface area and oftentimes the axons will attach to dendritic spines. Here is the nucleus of the nucleus of the cell that contains the chromosomes and the genes. Um, here is the mitochondrion. These are sort of the powerhouses of the cell, okay? So they gather, store, and release energy as needed. Uh, then you have the endoplasmic reticulum right here. So some of this you may remember basically back from high school. These are folded layers of the membrane where proteins are assembled. So um, neurons communicate with certain types of information. We'll be talking about this in later chapters. Basically neurotransmitters. So we'll be talking about the types of neurotransmitters later, but protein neurotransmitters are fundamentally formed by proteins. So these neurotransmitters have to be oftentimes made somewhere. And so the endoplasmic reticulum is where proteins are going to be assembled that could comprise neurotransmitters. Right here you're going to have intracellular fluid that basically that everything is suspended in. This is a tubule, okay. This is basically a transport um, molecule and it helps give the cell its shape. So these tubules, proteins can travel down these tubules and they'll also and they also of course help support the structure of the neuron. Here's the cell membrane, okay? We'll be talking more about the cell membrane. Um, cell membrane is a semi-permeable membrane. This is really, really critical for um, how a neuron functions. And so certain things can semi-permeable, certain things can enter the neuron and certain things can't. Okay? Here's the axon. Right here is going to be sort of this axon hillock, which we'll talk about later on. And uh, these microfilaments that are right in here, these are thread-like fibers. Um, they also provide a support structure similar to the tubules that provide sort of a cellular, a cellular skeleton. And uh, lysosomes, these are sacs containing enzymes that break down waste. Okay, So just like anything else, making these proteins and in making energy we're going to have certain waste products and the lysosomes are going to break down the waste products. Here you have the Golgi body, okay? This is a structure that packages the protein molecules for transports. So the, so the proteins might be made in the endoplasmic reticulum and then here they're going to be readied for transport, okay? So the nucleus, this is the command center. This is where all the DNA is. And we'll be talking about um, more of this later on, okay? In the nucleus, gene, gene transcription, when cells replicate, they need to replicate the DNA. DNA also includes, is basically um, an instruction booklet for just not that cell, um, but for how to make specific things like the proteins and, and things that are needed for, uh, to transport as neurotransmitters. Certain por portions of a gene will be will be sort of pulled out, and we'll have neurotranscription to to instruct the cell as to how and what um, information should be coded to form proteins. And this is basically how this incur occurs. Protein transcription is the transcription of DNA to messenger RNA. Okay and then the translation of messenger RNA to amino acid, which forms a poly polypeptide chain, which forms a protein. Here is like, okay, you pull out the section, translates the instructions. The instructions roughly would be sort of like, okay, here, let's put this instructional code into the computer, which this is sort of, this is a metaphor. The computer or the instrument will then create the various parts, polypeptide chain, which will form a protein. So the DNA uncoils to expose a gene, 
the sequence um, that needs uh, that is needed to encode a protein, so it pulls out the specific instructions. Then because the two sort of matching halves, then you pull out one strand, and this serves as a template for transcribing a molecule of mRNA. So then it basically says, okay, I'm going to match this, and I'm going to form the mirror image. This mirror image leaves, and this would be the code, okay, that would come in contact with the ribosomes in the endoplasmic reticulum. So this is where they would um, create the proteins. And this code will say, like, okay, put everything together just like this. And um, so that will create a chain of um, polypeptides, which together, this uh, particular chain of amino, uh, of amino acids, particular types, will together form this protein. So you need to have certain types of amino acids, just not anything, certain types, it'll be this particular type of protein, and that particular type of protein will be then packaged and could serve as a uh, neurotransmitter. So once the proteins are um, constructed, then they'll enter the Golgi bodies, and this is basically your transport center. So it's like, okay, well here you have your, um, mitle, your endoplasmic reticulum, which is the factory, and then what was made in the factory will be sent to the post office, which is the Golgi, Golgi bodies, where it will be wrapped in a membrane, so it'll be wrapped and packaged and given a shipping address, okay? It can be shipped to other parts of the, of the cell that need it, uh, but it also can be shipped down these microtubules that I, that I mentioned earlier, the sort of pathways, and it'll travel down here to the end of the axon, okay, where these proteins will be released into the synapse. It can also be incorporated into the membrane because it might be needed for movement um, from outside and inside the cell. And then the final thing is it can act within the cell as an enzyme. So there may be things that within the cell that it will be basically here waiting to interact with other proteins that come in from the cell to form a particular function. So it can be excreted as a neurotransmitter. It can, it can incorporate itself with the cell or it can remain inside. In the end, what you really need to know is like, okay, well, these proteins, these have these amino acids. They're, they're, you have these they're built and they're created in the cell. The building blocks of those amino acids are going to need to come from certain places, certain nutrients that the neuron is going to need, for example, and this will oftentimes come from the food that you eat. And this is one of the reasons why diet can actually affect behavior and mood. If you don't eat enough of a certain thing, then you can be insufficient. You can not have a sufficient amount of nutrients to actually create some of the proteins that are required for your neurons to effectively communicate. So the other thing that's really essential for learning about how neurons communicate is how certain things cross the cell membrane. The cell does not manufacture everything that it needs for uh, a protein or to create proteins. Um, some of it, it manufactures, some of it has to be delivered from outside the cell to inside of the cell. So they might need to be receiving some packages that will contain bits of enzymes and nutrients and amino acids that are used to create these proteins. So we have then certain information has to cross the cell membrane. But this information has to cross the cell membrane in a very, very specific way. So certain ions can cross the cell membrane appropriate through an appropriately shaped channel. Okay, so this is an potassium ion, and so there are channels basically within these phospholipid bilayers that basically say, it's like, okay, look, this lets this particular shaped ion through, and it can travel through whenever it needs, whenever it needs to, for example, okay? Then another type of channel that you have is something that's called a gated channel, okay? Uh, we'll be talking about this more later, so you just really want to know that there's different types of channels. But a gated channel will be open sometimes to let stuff through, and it will be closed sometimes so that things don't come through, all right? And then you also have a pump, and this is a, an example of a sodium-potassium pump. What happened is a pump transporter, it changes shape to carry substances across a cell. So it basically waits for, here's an example of the sodium that comes in and fits this, the potassium, potassium comes in and fits this. Uh, when these two ions come in contact with this, with this transporter, then it changes shape and moves and basically 
exchanges them for each other, okay? This is what is known as the sodium potassium pump, and we'll be talking about it more later because it's pretty important for cellular communication.